Someone else who loves to speak his piece is uh, Mickey Huff. He's up next. He is the director of uh, Project Censored, president of the Media Freedom Foundation, co-editor of the annual Censored book series, and professor of social science, thank goodness, and history at Diablo Valley College. Let your lucky students. Thanks so much, uh, Rachel, Emily, Frank. Um, I want to thank everyone here today. It's an honor to be invited um, for this 20 year anniversary slash commemoration of the 9-11 events. Um, go Kevin, hard act to follow brother, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna do my best. <laughs> and uh, thanks for speaking your peace and your truth, uh, man. You've been doing it for a long time and I've learned a lot from you. Learned a lot from so many of the people here. So again, Honored to be here. Thanks to, uh, again, Emily, Rachel, Frank, Medea, Code Pink, Peace a Action, Massachusetts. Also want to thank my good friend, the great scholar, author of Giants, the Global Power Elites, previous director of Project Censored, Peter Phillips, who had the courage to question dominant media narratives around the events of September 11, despite the lack of support from many on the left. His collections of unanswered questions around 9-11 are still ever relevant today, and his book Giants is actually, speaking of who benefits, is a who's who of who benefited from the global war of terror kicked into high gear by the events of 9-11. As William Faulkner once wrote, the past is never dead, it's not even past. And history matters, the teaching of history matters. And now 20 years later, 9-11 literally is history to millions of people who were too young to remember or not even born yet. And this generation now comprised many of my undergraduate students taking courses for me in US history, political economy, and a course called Critical Reasoning in History that I've taught with a focus on contemporary historiography and the events of 9-11 for about 17 years now. Um, it's called History in the Making, Contemporary Historiography in the Rough Draft of History. The subtopic is today's fake news is tomorrow's fake history, riffing on the CIA whistleblower Ralph McGehee, case studies and media myth-making and the propaganda of historical construction. While this is all basically around the recent history of 9-11, I certainly go back and set the stage for these things, but nevertheless, um, my brief talk here today in my WTC seven minutes is to um, focus on young people and another generation of people learning our history. So I wear a lot of hats, as you heard uh, Rachel say, I'm co-chair of the history department, chair of the journalism department, director of Project Censored, the anti-censorship pro-free press group Project Censored. And for the last 45 years, Project Censored I've been involved uh, since 2008, have been surveying the rough drafts of history, journalism, around major events and topics that impact all of us, including but not limited to the events of September 11, 20 years ago. It's not exactly fun or easy thing to do. Uh, doesn't win one many popularity contests. <laughs> uh, and in fact, it, it sometimes turns erstwhile allies into something else. So, so challenging is the path uh, that follows transparently sourced factual reporting that dare challenge the status quo and official historical narratives, right? I hereby would like to ask everybody here to please not participate in the circular firing squad so prevalent on the left around, and, and remember who we are really fighting against and fighting for. 10 years ago this week, the Occupy movement was born and gave us the language of the 99% and the 1%. And you heard Rachel riffing on that just moments ago. Let's not lose sight of that cabal of billionaires, war profiteers, big pharma drug pushers, fossil fuel polluters and purveyors of Big Brother Incorporated, the surveillance capitalists of our technocracy. This is where our ire must be directed, right? This is where, it, not toward each other. We must, we must look up, not at each other, to, to, to fight amongst ourselves. George W. Bush said, let's never accept outlandish conspiracy theories around the events of 9-11. Well, don't let that label shut down inquiry as the biggest conspiracy theory around 9-11 has come from the US government and our corporate media. And of course, the conspiracy theory label was weaponized and used by the CIA in the 1960s to discourage people from challenging the Warren Commission and JFK, CIA memo 1035-960. I urge you to look into it and read the great book by Lance DeHaven Smith about this called Conspiracy Theory in America. Well, let's move in here back to the teaching of history. Gore Vidal once noted that we are the United States of amnesia, right? The great political scientist, Michael Parenti cautioned us, those engaged in the manufacturing of history often introduce distortions at the point of origin well before the history is written or even played out. 
This initial process of control is not usually left to chance, but is regularly pursued by interested parties who are situated to manipulate the record. It is important to teach these unhistories, the untold history leading to 9-11 and thereafter in this past 20 years, with thanks to Oliver Stone, Peter Kuznick, and other historians. The media and the political class has weaponized 9-11 and cast a cloud of fear, not just across the United States, but the world. And when we look at this media, we see that elites do not want us to forget right? They want us to remember to be fearful, to be distrustful of each other, to be racist and lust for violence against innocents around the world because we were lied to about 9-11 and that such people allegedly hate our freedoms. This is not true. What is hated is our ignorance, our apathy, our privilege, and our jingoistic behavior. What I hope we do not forget, however, is the road to 9-11. And from remember the main World War I's cry, fight them over there, so we don't have to fight them over here, which was echoed after 9-11, right? The day that will live in infamy, Pearl Harbor, right? The lies around the Gulf of Tonkin and the Vietnam War exposed by Daniel Ellsberg, depending on papers, including cover-ups at Kent State. The anti-war activists in media Pennsylvania who uncovered the FBI's COINTEL program, still alive and well to this day, operating under other names, right? Given new life after the 9-11 attacks, COINTELPRO was. It seems that there is a very clear pattern of lies and deception around U.S. wars, followed by crackdowns on civil liberties at home. And that pattern continues with 9-11, the history of bin Laden, the CIA, Iraq, and WMDs. The list goes on and on. But looking at 9-11 in particular, quickly, the rise of the neoconservatives, the project for the new American century. Let's not forget them and who they are. The document Rebuilding America's Defenses, it calls for a new Pearl Harbor in order to unleash leash an American century, a new American century. Those wars were already planned well in advance of 9-11 in the Middle East. Once Bush, Cheney, Rice, and Rumsfeld were in place, they immediately looked to put into effect what the Project for New American Century called that new American century and dominated with U.S. hegemony. 9-11 was the event that gave them the opportunity. It was the catalyzing event, like the new Pearl Harbor, that gave them the, quote, opportunity to unleash US empire across the world with impunity. So let's not forget the failures around 9-11 that are many, the, the, the FAA, NORAD failing to scramble planes, the stock market short sales just prior to the attacks. Let's not forget the dust and deceit of the environmental fallout and destruction of the Twin Towers in New York City when Chrissy Todd Whitman at the EPA lied about the safety of the air so Wall Street could open and thousands have fallen ill and even more have died. The government failed to do anything about these victims of 9-11 until they were shamed into action by a comedian on late night TV and Jon Stewart. Pathetic. Absolutely disgraceful. Let's not forget about the anthrax attacks ultimately traced the US military base and subsequently boss investigation by the FBI that fell into the vast memory hole, which turns out is quite a rabbit hole. Speaking of the FBI, let's not forget whistleblowers like Colleen Rowley about the many forewarnings that were all somehow missed by an unelected presidential administration. Let's not forget the CIA and counterterrorism czars that said attacks were coming the summer of, of, of 2001 and that quote, the attacks would be spectacular. Let's not forget CNN and the BBC announcing in advance that WTC7 Tower fell 20 minutes before it did. That's some crackerjack reporting. Let's not forget the Afghans offered to assist our, our, our looking into bin Laden, asking only for evidence of his complicity. And the US said, we don't need any evidence and likely didn't have any. Let's not forget, let's never forget we invaded two countries not technically involved in 9-11, killing over a million innocent people, displacing millions of people more based around the lies of 9-11. Let's not forget the media fear, porn, and propaganda that's still with us to this day. Let's not forget the endless invocations. Let's never forget Condi Rice, who wrote books with Philip Zelikow, who was head of the uh, editing the 9-11 Commission, scaring Americans with phantoms of mushroom clouds over New York City, lying to the commission about never predicting an attack that would take place, even though she delivered a presidential daily briefing saying exactly that. Let's not, for, you know, let's not forget um, you know, the normalization of total surveillance and torture, taking shoes off at airports, endless breaking news from terror suspect roundups and scary soundtracks, constantly waving flags, trying to cover the shame of killing innocent people with thanks to Howard Zinn. Let's never forget the cover-ups of the 9-11 Commission with Philip Zelikow, who saw to it that over 75% of the questions of the victims' families around 9-11 that fought for the Bush administration for over 400 days to form a commission were never even addressed. Only 9% of those questions were satisfactorily answered, further underscoring the purpose of such political commissions. It's to cement propaganda of official narratives in the public consciousness and move on. The corporate media, not mainstream, corporate dutifully helped in this process. And history demands that we do not simply move on. It demands we continue to ask questions, 
to not accept contradictions and lies from above. I could go on about 9-11 historiography and I do a whole course on it in the semester and I can never address it all. And I know my time here is coming to an end, which I'm grateful to have this opportunity to, to talk to everybody and be here today. To all the young people here, please never stop asking questions. Um, never, stop, never stop striving for the truth, no matter how hard or unpopular. Stand up for social, political, and economic justice for your generation and those that even will come after you. What we do today shapes the kind of world you inherit. And while it's hard to imagine as a young person, one day you too will be older and another youth will ask what you did with your time here. Emma Goldman said the most unpardonable sin in society is independence of thought. I encourage more sinners and more truth seekers about our past, about the events of 9-11 in hopes we become a more accurately informed, more empathetically driven and truly more just and equitable society. In order to never forget, we need to pursue those infamous unknown unknowns Rumsfeld mused about. We must strive to teach the truth about our history, triumphs and tragedies, and learn from our calamitous mistakes so that we won't be, so they won't be repeated by yet another generation forging its own future in hopes of eventually being on the right side of history. Please feel free to follow more of our work at projectcensored.org. This past couple of weeks, we're featuring specials on 9-11 and you can contact me through projectcensored.org, Mickey at projectcensored.org. Everyone that's here is invited to be on the show and I'm hoping to use excerpts from today's amazing testimonies on future shows. Thank all of you very much for the important work that you do. Again, it's an honor to be here. Thank you so much for that, Mickey, and especially thank you for, uh, for, for saying that you will spread the word yourself uh, by taking these, these testimonials uh, and, and rebroadcasting them. Uh, I would encourage all of our audience to do the same. Um, uh, I know people may be scrambling for all the great links and, and information that's being shared in the chat. Don't worry, we're going to send that out to you. We're going to send out a bunch of relevant links uh, and actions you can take, and most importantly, the recordings uh, uh, of this program. And once again, I, I encourage you to share that with your friends, family, uh, and colleagues uh, who could not be here live. Uh, 